So let's do light versus dark. It's kind of a similar idea. We're going to have to start off the same way. We're going to sketch our little bird out here. He's probably not actually such a little bird. He's probably a couple feet tall. but uh, So we're just going to start with that basic idea of structure. So I'm going to find where his neck would be um, and his back here. He's kind of a big almondy football shape. Just a little center line to find the, the angle for the beak and his eye there. And I'll put in his legs. If you don't draw these exactly the same way every time, don't worry about it because I won't be either. I'll, uh, they'll look a little different each time I do them. So, uh, where'd my eraser go? There it is. So I'm going to take this line out here. I don't need that at the moment. So the idea this time is we're going to try to play off all these light and dark values that make up our bird. Okay, so we're going to draw a box. Once we get him sketched out, we're going to draw kind of a box around him here. So, you know, we talked, we just talked briefly about the rule of thirds and, you know, how that's kind of the most basic way to break up an image. But for the most part, he's center, he's center of the page, which is where we don't want to be um, when you do the rule of thirds. So, there's not a lot we can do about that because um, he's kind of an odd shape. He's going to kind of need to be in the center of the page. And unless we go to a format where we're using a oddly shaped piece of paper or canvas, which makes it harder to um, to mat and frame things, we're kind of stuck. But so what we can do is we can start to think about that idea of uh, light and dark, and how we can play off those those different things. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the same kind of basic drawing with him that I did earlier. Um, just this kind of breaking down to some simple shapes here. Um, we'll get into actually drawing him in, in much more detail um, on the last thing we do today. But for now, we just, you know, kind of simple contour drawings are fine. And again, these do not need to be great drawings, they can just kind of be rough and ready here. But we do want to get like these ins and outs and some of the, the shape to him. Okay, so there's our basic contour drawing of our stork friend here. Okay, so what we want to do now is let's go ahead and do the same thing we did before and we're going to shade that in. And again, we don't need, we just want the, the bigger um, bolder areas. We don't want a lot of uh, fine shading or anything in here. Um, Now there's this little white feather here that sticks out the back. We want to see if we can save that. We won't want that to be white. Um, there's a little white edge here too, but if that one gets lost, it's understandable. I've lost it a couple times myself. This is a good, if you like to do pen and ink work, this is a good, these are good um, techniques to use for composition and, and elements in your pen and ink work too because this lends itself very well to um, high contrast images. So, all right. 
So now we've got basically the same drawing we just we just completed. Okay. What we want to do this time is we want to look for areas of light and dark that we can play off of with our background. So the top of the head here and the and the bill is is light. So we could do something in the background here that kind of accentuates that. Um, you know, whether it's bushes or leaves or just uh, color fields. And you see how much more that head comes forward now. A minute ago it was just kind of there. Now it's starting to pop forward. And, you know, the more I play the contrast of the dark and light value through there, the more that part starts to stand out. And we can use that to um, direct the eye in our images. Right, so we're just going to build up some light and dark areas here to contrast the light and dark areas in our bird. And we can do the same kind of thing down here. And we're being pretty picky. We're, we're really trying to frame those areas without really uh, running into the darker areas at this point. First one here. So if we take a look at these two together, this is a this is a nice drawing. It's got movement to it, and it's got you know um, a nice contrast of light and dark. You can tell it's some sort of a stork. It's a, some sort of a bird, um, but it's just kind of there on the page. Um, it almost works as a uh, spot illustration where you know you, you kind of want um, you know text from an article wrapping around this framing it somehow um, or it could be a stamp or something like that um, even if you even if you frame this in if we go back and we, and we do this with it that helps it it kind of gives it a sense of, of place is, you know, it feels like it's it's on the page, but chances are, unless you put you know a colored mat or something around there, it's still kind of going to feel kind of floating. Okay, so if we compare these two, you can see how this one feels much more like it's in some some kind of an environment, even though all it is is just a bunch of pencil squiggles around it. Okay. one is light versus dark okay it's just we're just working with light areas against dark areas and those can be um, you know we're working at it everything here um, for this part kind of in the extremes you know we're not doing any real um, variation in values we're just kind of going you know black against white kind of kind of thing to kind of create more visual interest and, and create a sense of place so like these, these could have been leaves. You know, we could have we could have made these kind of like leaf shapes out here or something or um, you know whatever. Um, this could have been grasses, just to give you an idea of you know what that environment might be. Okay. So we're gonna do the next one. We're gonna do is lost and found edges, which is actually very similar to the one that we just completed. 